Hello and welcome to the Fat Boss Guide to Galacrass 10 Man Normal in the Siege of Orgrimmar. Hello. And this encounter is excellent. It is a very cool encounter. It's very different because like you spend most of the encounter fighting your way up to the boss and like dealing with these two towers. It's amazing. It's a really, really interesting fight. They've done, done very well. So to start off for this encounter, you want to bring two tanks, two to three healers, and a mixed DPS makeup. However, AoE and cleave DPS is very superior, as well as multi dots. So if you do have them at your disposal, you should bring as many of them as you possibly can. Now this encounter is a two-phase fight. However, you don't even see Galacras until the last phase. He's just sort of flying around, doing pretty much nothing for the first phase. Now phase one, your whole objective in this phase is to be able to gain access to the gun turrets on top of the two towers and in order to shoot down the boss to activate phase two. But the thing is, while you're doing this, you need to be defending a group of random, like Alliance, NPC players and... They're like the leaders of the Alliance faction. Well, I, don't, I don't even know who gives this shit, they're Alliance. Matter. Either way, there's a bunch of people. You've got to make sure that you defend them from waves of too many bosses and like various ad waves as well. Now the towers right at the very start of the encounter are locked. Um, and they're only open by like demolition crew NPCs at set times. Um, and the left tower, which is the south tower, will open roughly two minutes into the encounter. And the right tower, which is the north tower, will open around two and a half minutes later after that. So before we talk about the towers, we're going to talk about all the individual ads that could be in the waves of ads that constantly keep spawning throughout the fight. The first thing we're going to talk about is the Bone Crusher. Now this will occasionally charge to the Alliance faction leaders and stun them and start dealing 10% of their health as damage every second. You can interrupt this by stunning or gripping him or knocking him back. So really with it, when this ad does come in, just make sure that you do have one of those abilities available because of course if the Alliance leaders do die, for the horde and everything, but we kind of need them for the encounter. Yeah, it, it will wipe. And the, the Alliance faction leaders do have a ridiculous amount of health. So 10% of their health is like millions and millions and millions. And you can heal it back up, but obviously to heal that much, you're going to struggle. So just when they do charge, and sometimes you will have two in a pack, when they do charge, just stun them or grip them and it will interrupt their cast. Another ad you can see in these packs is the Flame Slingers, and these are pretty much low priority. You don't need to worry about these too much. All they'll do is shoot random fire arrows at players, and when it does hit them, it'll leave a patch of fire on the ground. Don't stand in it. That's all you have to worry about these guys. There's also the grunts, and they're really, really complicated. They'll um, get their axes and hit you with them. Fucking mind blown. So basically, you just got to tank them. They pretty much do nothing. Yeah, they do nothing. So, so it's so. just, yeah, just pick them up. And the next ad we're going to talk about is the flag bearer. Now, these are relatively important. What they'll do is they'll summon a banner that buffs all mobs around them and themselves. They will buff their haste and damage by 50%. Um, the banner hasn't got a lot of health at all, so you need to nuke the living shit out of that when it does spawn. Um, and just so you don't have too many banners, you should really try and prioritize these. If you, do, if you are single target damage, then just make sure you take these out first. Now the next ad that we're going to talk about is the Tidal Shaman and this is really really quite important because they have a lot of various heals. They, they have like chain heals and all this sort of stuff. All of them are interruptible so make sure you do it because it will just heal all the things you're trying to kill by a lot. However they also place a healing tide totem that heals 10% of all the mobs health back every tick. So you've got to kill the healing tide totem very very quickly and to be honest you can just lock these out quite easily with like stuns and stuff but make sure of course you do have your stuns and stuff available for the bone crushers. So really just focus down the Tidal Shamans, they're really quite high on your priority list, so make sure that you are aware when they do come in. Now occasionally you also have Protodrakes that will fly down. These are kind of high priority as well, but you won't really get that many of these guys. All they'll do is just do a high frontal cone damage ability, so it's important that when you, these do come down, just face them away from the raid. Make sure you're not tanking them on top of the raid. And that's more or less it. So after you've dealt of like all these different waves of mobs for like about 1 minute and 45 seconds or so, the first mini boss will spawn, and this is around 15 seconds before the first tower is actually accessible. Now this mini boss is Korga the Snake, and really, she's not really a big deal. She'll do a stacking nature dot on the tank, all you need to do is just out heal it. She'll spawn a poison clown directly underneath her feet, you need to make sure you move out of it. And when she reaches low health, she'll turn into a snake and start spamming the raid with a poison bolt volley. Um, it does hit quite hard, so you need to make sure that you're obviously out healing it, but when this does happen you need to like kill her as soon as you possibly can, just to minimise the amount of damage on the raid. Now there's also two adds that appear with her, however the, the adds are pretty irrelevant. They'll, they'll, hit, they'll do damage to random targets now and then, they'll like shadow step to them, but generally just cleave them down with the boss, they're not a big deal. 
Now, while fighting her, a demolisher will appear and start attacking the tower that has become accessible. So that'll be the south tower at this point and start spamming it with fireballs. Now, any player inside of the tower will start taking a ridiculous amount of damage and will be stunned like indefinitely. So you will pretty much die if you're inside a tower with one of these demolishers up. What you need to do is that you must kill the demolisher before entering the tower. So once the demolisher is dead, you need to send a group of four players, so a tank, a healer and two DPS to go up into the tower and defeat a mini boss up there to gain access to the turret and because we need these turrets to shoot down Galagras. Now while everyone else is dealing with the like the normal mobs downstairs so you are going to be splitting up into two groups it is good to like send sort of AoE and cleave DPS up there because there are quite a lot of mobs all on top of each other but of course you do actually have to deal with this little mini boss up there. Now both towers are more or less identical apart from the mini boss right at the top of the tower. However, the mini boss itself, they're both very, very similar in, in ways. So both bosses will attempt to knock you off the top of the tower, forcing you to deal with the mechanics. Otherwise you need to walk all the way back up. Um, and yeah, it's quite a long walk, so don't get knocked off. And obviously you can take full damage and stuff like that. And if you are low when you get knocked off, you're pretty much dead unless you have like slow fall or some sort of immunity. So the left tower's boss will start casting an ability called Arkin Smash, and after a few seconds, anyone caught in like the epicenter will be thrown off. So that's the ability that you really need to watch out for. Now this one is sort of slightly harder than the uh, north tower, because this boss will also slow you, but it's still pretty easy to avoid the smash. If you get hit by it, then you've done something very, very wrong. Now, while you are up there, you want to make sure that you are killing the adds um, around as well because they're shooting a shit ton of fire arrows down at the raid, um, making the raid having to move a lot more than they need to. So make sure you do clear out the adds as well as killing the boss. Now, once you have managed to kill all the adds and everything upstairs, you shouldn't immediately jump back down and start helping people with the ad waves. One person should jump into the turret and start shooting down wind reavers that are flying about because these wind reavers that are in the air will start throwing random axes at random players and it's damage that you can't really afford to have in the last phase. So clear these up and then drop back down and start dealing with the uh, adds downstairs. One thing to note when you're in the turret, don't attack the boss. There's no need. Just, just wait. You don't attack the boss just yet. Once you've completely cleared that tower, you'll jump back down with the rest of your buddies and then you'll be clearing uh, ways of add until you get your next mini boss that comes in this wave called High Enforcer Thranok. Now Thranok just does a ridiculous amount of damage to your tank, so it's very very important that you keep the tank as high as you possibly can. One of his abilities is Shattering Strike, which is a high cleave damage ability, but it, it like cleaves off the tank. It's almost like a chaining effect, so make sure you're not stood anywhere near your tank. Now his main ability that you'll notice the most is something called Crusher's Call. This will mass grip 5 random players that are stood within 45 yards of him and he'll start casting a massive stomp once they've actually reached the boss. Anyone stood at the end of this cast time in this stomp will be dead pretty much if you don't use a cooldown. It does a ridiculous amount of damage, just don't get hit by it, you have plenty of time to move out and ultimately if you want to use speed increases like Stampeding Roar and stuff like that then you can, but really it's pretty easy. Now just like the previous waves mini boss, you'll also get a demolisher, however this time it's now attacking the right tower which is the north tower. So you want to kill the demolisher and then you want to send the same group up into the next tower and repeat what they did on the, on the first tower. Now as we said before, this boss is actually slightly easier on this tower because it doesn't slow you, however it does do slightly more damage. Now, once you have cleared everything, for you to actually start phase two, you need to shoot Galakras with both turrets. So once the, everything at the top of the tower is dead, you want one person to stay and kill any of the Wind Reavers there. So they're sitting in the turret to take out the Wind Reavers. And then you want another player to run all the way into the other tower and then jump in that turret. Once all the Wind Reavers are dead, then you want to start shooting down Galakras. Now before you do actually decide to bring down the boss for phase 2, it's important that you have not just received a new fresh wave of adds, as it can be extremely messy to sort of deal with Galakras and a wave of adds at the exact same time. So you need to communicate with the people in the towers that are getting ready to shoot down Galakras, um, so they know when to actually shoot down the boss. Now when you do actually decide to bring down the boss, it's important that you both shoot at the exact same time. If you don't fire within quick succession of each other, it can actually fail and you won't bring down the boss. And the, the actual shoot ability has like a 4 or 5 second cooldown or something like that. So you can't really spam it. So you need to really be patient. Make sure you do it at the exact same time. And then the boss will come down for phase 2. Now there has been a lot of mechanics that you need to have like known and now it's kind of like oh shit the boss is here he's gonna do loads of stuff. Luckily the boss does pretty much fuck all but it's still quite a challenge in order to deal with him. 
One of his abilities is Pulsing Flames. Now, basically he'll do 30k damage to all players every pulse, and each pulse increases his fire damage by um, 3%. So it's a pseudo rage ability. Yep. So the, can, the longer the fight goes on, the more damage you'll start doing. Yeah, you can really think of it as like Beth to Lack Phase 2 um, from all the way back in Firelands if you were there, anyone. So yeah, that's quite cool. But the main ability that you need to deal with is the Flames of the Galakrond. What the boss will do, he'll spawn a ball of fire that will spawn directly underneath the boss and it will target a random player and it will start moving towards that player. Now, if it does eventually hit that player, it will explode dealing 600k to all players in the raid. Um, so it's pretty much a one hit to everyone. However, each player the ball goes through before it reaches its target will reduce the amount of damage it will do severely. So it works very, very similarly to the orb in the Blood Council fight in ICC. If you were there, if you can, if you, if you can remember that. <laughs> so the whole point of it is that you want it to go through as many players as possible, and that's why you'll see that we have the raid sort of stacked in one point. Um, and whenever the ball does target someone in the raid, they move behind the raid. So the ball has to travel through all these people first before it hits that player. Now every time the ball does go through a player, it will apply a debuff that increases the amount of damage that you do take from the ball itself. Because as the ball goes through the players, it also deals, like I think it's like a 30k tick or something like that. But the stacks can make it start hurting more and more and more. Now this debuff seems a little bit weird. It seems to only apply to the first few players that it actually travels through. So you might want to rotate players who are stood closer. I think it's the first two, at least that it appears to be like that. So the first two players probably want to rotate, the, the two nearest players. Ultimately, if your stack isn't dropping and you're on like seven stacks, you just need to move out the raid Yeah. Um, and just don't get hit by the ball. But obviously if the ball is targeting you, you need to move back into the raid and behind the raid so that the ball goes through. Now one thing to note, this ball can target melee. Yeah, it's super stupid that they can target melee, but at least it like, melee get out of a lot of things actually. No, it's not stupid. It's time for you to deal with some mechanics. So That's right. if you are melee, um, it's, you've got to make sure you're really, really quick on reacting. It's good to stand at the box, uh, the boss's max melee range so you can hit him while being the furthest away. Of course, all the way towards the raid. So as soon as you get the giant DBM or warning or anything on you, you can just run straight through the raid. This does mean that of course you won't be doing damage, but of course, you won't kill the whole raid. So the only thing you need to worry about in this phase is just getting used to the ball. If you get used to the ball and you can like out heal it, you won't have a problem at all. This phase is very, very quick as well, you, especially if you save bloodlust and stuff like that. The Alliance NPCs will help you in this phase. They'll do a bit of damage. I mean, they help you in all the phases, but generally we sort of ignored the NPCs and we actually got an achievement. I think it's bugged because they did help <laughs> us. But but yeah, don't worry about the NPCs. Just keep them alive and just do your job. It, it's a relatively simple fight, but a decent one nonetheless. Yeah. So thanks for watching guys, if this guide did help you out then please do drop us a like, it helps us out significantly. And make sure to comment, rate and subscribe. And if you'd like to see any of our other 10 man normal guides for Siege of Orgrimmar then please do click up on the screen now on any of the bosses. And that will take you straight to those bosses so you can learn the ways of the raiding. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>